screen after you type in fsassessments.org. You click where it says Florida Assessment of Student Thinking or FAST. Then when you get to the next screen, you're going to click on the one that says Students and Families. And then finally, take a sample test for grades 3 through 10. When you get to this screen where it says please sign in, you're not going to change anything. You're going to leave guest user on and you're going to leave guest session on. And then click sign in. Choose whatever grade you are in. I'm going to go ahead and choose the seventh grade chest. And then you want, you're going to want to make sure you click where it says start grade seven fast ELA reading sample items. On the day of the test, if you have accommodations or you need accessibility settings, you would change them in this screen. But most people will just press select. On the next screen, if you wanted to see if the test settings you chose on the last screen worked, you would click View Test Settings. Otherwise, where it says View Help Guide, click on that. This help guide is very helpful in helping you to remember how to do the things we're going to talk about today. On the day of the test, your proctor will not be able to help you. So it's absolutely important that you know how to get to the help guide and I'll show you how when we get into the system because otherwise you're not going to be able to be helped because unfortunately your proctors can't help you with things like this. Then click begin test now. When you log in, you'll see that on one side there are passages and on the other side there are questions. The first thing you're going to want to do is scroll down to see how many passages are there. Some passages, or sometimes there might just be one, sometimes there's two, but you're going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom to make sure. On the right hand side are where you'll see all your questions. The way to navigate questions is you can either click on the question number up at the top or you can click the back or next buttons up in the upper left. If you click on items, it'll tell you which ones you haven't done yet. The orange triangle is the, are the ones that have not been completed. Also at the top, you'll notice that there's a save button. Your work automatically saves after two minutes, but if you would like to make absolutely sure and save your work, you can click the save button. Pause is only used if there's an emergency during testing. On the right hand side, you'll notice that there is a notes button. If you click notes, you can go ahead and type in there. If you want to save and close your notes, you would press save and close. Otherwise, you'd press cancel. I'm going to press save and close so you can see what happens. If I click notes again, my note that I wrote, hello, is still there. To get out of it, you can also just press the X button. To get this out of the way, you can roll this anywhere on your screen. The line reader button, this is a good tool if you want to stay focused. You just read line by line. And the way that you go up and down are the up and down errors on the right hand, right hand of your computer. To get rid of that, you just click on it again. And then there's zoom in and zoom out. Zoom in makes things bigger. Zoom out makes things smaller. And then finally, the help guide, the ever important help guide is in the upper right question mark. So if you click that, this help guide can also be moved around and you can scroll up and down to find whatever it is that you need in the help guide. To highlight, which is a very important tool for you to use, you just go ahead and click on what you want to highlight. And then up at the top, where you see the three lines, Click Highlight Selection and choose the color that you want to highlight. To get rid of it, you go over it again and then remove highlighting. 
Over on the other side, there's also three lines. These are things that will help you with the questions. First is a tutorial. If you click the tutorial, a box will pop up. Now it looks like there should be sound, but there isn't. So there's absolutely no sound for these, but it shows you how to answer that type of question. So if you don't know how, you just click the tutorial button and it walks you through it. Also, there's mark for review. If you click that, that means that you want to come back to it later. And you'll notice that there's a little flag with a check mark. The number has the uh, edge folded over. And then if you go up to items, you'll notice there's a flag on that item. And then finally, oops, on questions where there are multiple choice, you will also have a choice for strike through. This strike through can help you eliminate answers. So you just press strike through and whatever answers you want to eliminate. If you want to get rid of it, you just click it again and, and the strike through goes away. You can also highlight here. So just click what you want to highlight in the question. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it doesn't work, but that's how you could highlight if you wanted to highlight part of a question. To get from one passage to the next, you just go to the last question, and then you click Next. And then this warning will pop up if you have questions that you haven't answered. If you're ready to move on regardless, go ahead and press Yes. If you want to go back, press No. We're going to press Yes for today just so we can take a look at the next passage. So the next passage looks exactly the same as the first. Obviously it's a different passage, but the same idea. On the left is the passage, on the right is the questions. One thing I neglected to show you is that if you click the right arrow, it makes the passage bigger. If you click the left arrow, it makes the questions bigger. For some of you, uh, that's how you might like to take your test. Now let's go through and look at the different kinds of questions. These are just regular old multiple choice, 8, 9, and 10, and 11. But 12 is a two part. It's got part A and part B. In order to get this question correct, you have to answer both parts. This is a, like a grid where you have to click something on each of the columns in order for your question to be correct. And then you're going to want to make sure that you read the question very carefully because there's things like this where it says you need two different kinds of answers. So if you only clicked one, it would be wrong. Let's go back to the first passage and take a look at some of the questions there. This is another grid where you would have to make sure all of the rows have something in them in order to get the answer correct. This is a regular multiple choice, but this is something called a hot text item. So for this one, you're looking for a certain word, so you would click on the underlying word that you think is the answer. This is another one where you have to find two different statements. Number four is regular multiple choice, five is A and B, and six is A and B. I hope that clears up any questions you might have. Do not click this end test button until your proctor tells you to do so. Have a great day.